Hello, hello, and welcome to I Like Art Podcast. My name is Sarah Glupker, and I am really, really excited today to introduce you to an artist from the UK, and his name is David Roman. David Roman is a leading Romanian British sports artist known for his textured paintings and en- textured and energetic paintings of world class athletes. His diverse subjects have included Serena Williams, Michael Jordan, Roger Federer, Connor McGregor, and Anthony Joshua. While the subjects may span across multiple sports, each canvas is painted with dynamic, textured abstractions of power and strength. Works by Roman have been collected by renowned athletes like Mo Salah, Trent Alexander Arnold, and Alexander Mitrovic, as well as private collectors across the world from New York to Dubai, London, and Sydney. Clients include the NFL, Reebok, British Gymnastics, as well as the Professional Footballers Association, who works with Roman to create portraits for their monthly awards. And according to David Roman, this is the art for the champs. Through these paintings, their greatest moments live on for generations to come. I'm so excited to talk to you today, David, because I love the crossover between sports and art, and I cannot wait to hear about your artwork, why you feel connected to sports, and what creating these sport-themed portraits um, have done for you and your career, and all of the things. So welcome to I Like Art, David. How are you today? Hello, everyone. Hello, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. Awesome. I'm so excited you're here. All the way over across the pond, as we like to say, um, in the UK. So I want to talk to you about your art, but maybe you want to give us a little backstory. So you're Romanian. Um, Did you know you were an artist as a kid? Did you, you know, is this something that was new, not new for you, but you've been making art forever? Or did this come later in life? What is your, give us a little backstory. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've been creating since I can remember. My first one, of my first memories, was at three years old, uh, drawing a sun for visitors that would come to my house. That was like the family entertainment, um, and I would do the rays and I would explain everything. So, um, pretty much my whole life, I've been painting. When I was a kid, uh, whenever my parents would leave the house. They just leave me there with a stack of papers and some crayons and that be me sorted for the night. So yeah, I've been creating since I can remember when I was 14, I decided that I wanted to become a professional artist. So I got all the anatomy books and started really studying like all the bones and the muscles and you know, how all of that, um, how to draw all of that and how everything works uh, 3D. And I've from there I just continued to practicing. Um, I used to go to an art kind of like an art school slash club after school um, a couple of times a week and it was like a studio we would go there and paint and I did that throughout high school and then actually in high school I was um, um, in the science um, course I don't know how to explain it so I was doing like lots of maths and chemistry and physics Um, but um, I decided that I wanted to go to uni and study art and I was looking at the available options around my country and there was really two universities for both of which I would have to leave home of the different city and it just did not appeal to me at all um, I was looking around and I couldn't see any other artist that was Romanian that was making cool art and was making a great living from it. So I just, because, because I couldn't see anyone being successful around me, and I'm sure there was, I just didn't know of them, that made me think of, right, I need to move to somewhere else. And at that time, moving to England was an option. And as soon as I found out that that's possible, just went full, uh, full force ahead for that, moved on my own at 19 to England and studied art <laughs> for three years and then just carried on and then here we are. Oh my goodness. Wow. 
So you did go to university or you moved to England and you tried art on your own. How did that, how did that go? Yeah, I moved, uh, I came directly for university. So okay. that was, uh, in a way it was good because I mean, being an immigrant is difficult to find yourself, to find your place in, um, in society when, you know, you started from scratch. But I feel like being a student uh, and being on that path kind of gave me a place until I, you know, adapted and f figured out my own way. Okay, gotcha. Oh, that's awesome. And you probably met some amazing friends and had people shoulder to shoulder with you going through the program. And I can relate to that so much. I didn't move out of my country, but I moved about four hours away to university for art school. And yeah, the support you gain from going through a program like that with other students is invaluable. And yeah, I, being on your own is tough, especially when you're young like that. So I would like you to describe your art. It's um, very unique. I don't want to use the word unique, but what is your art like? I know it's a podcast and the listeners hopefully have paused and looked at your artwork, but how do you describe it? Um, even though I'm a painter, so I create a, a work in 2D uh, flat surfaces. Really, I, I'm trying to create, I'm trying to create like a monument that represents that represent, um, achievement of athletes. So um, obviously that's my grandiose vision. And right now it looks like a painting. Um, I'm starting to um, expand into digital art and NFTs. So mm -hmm. that opens a whole new world, world. But the way I see it, I feel like uh, where my art fits in, in in the world around me it's kind of like the warrior archetype story you know like back in the man cave days like you'd have the hunters that would go out and have these adventures and catch the uh, you know the prey whatever and they would bring it back the tribe would enjoy it and then they would share that story they would share those stories and adventures with the tribe reintegrate these stories into the community and then uh, the, <laughs> the tribe's artist would paint that onto the cave walls so I feel like that's a very old uh, archetypical story where uh, a hero goes on a journey accomplishes incredible things comes back reintegrates that story into the community and then it, it becomes immortalized through some sort of like visual representation so in my life right now um, um, I work with athletes who uh, are at the top of the game in their field and whenever they win a Super Bowl or they uh, win an Olympic medal or whatever um, that win is then uh, captured into an artwork and that's where I come in and yes for most people it may just look like a sports painting it may just be like um, you know whatever a portrait of an athlete but from my perspective that's how I feel that I'm serving the world and that's where I feel uh, I'm in my flow mm -hmm. oh my goodness that is so amazing your description of your work it it helps me understand and appreciate your artwork even more. I, okay, so I first found you from listening to the Marie Forleo podcast and she yes. had, it was like breakout sessions, interviews of different people in her B school and you were on there yep. and you described your artwork um, not as in depth as that. So uh, amazing. Um, and you talked about how you uh, made portraits of sport figures. And I immediately thought in my head, okay, a sports illustrated photo and somebody recreating that as a portrait. 
And so after I listened to the interview, I was so captivated by what you had talked about with them and Marie, and I looked up your artwork and it immediately stopped me in my tracks. And it was like, whoa, there's way more to what you're doing than copying a photograph or creating a really well, even a really nicely renditioned portrait, which is not easy to do. But the movement and the expression of your brush strokes and the the gestural um, brush strokes and drips and splashes and all of that that goes into the portrait um, makes it just so much more elevated. And then the story about creating these images that are monumental moments um, is amazing. So definitely everyone needs to go check out your work. And I love how you are tying in something like these Greek mythological figures with these modern sport titans, if you want to say that. I'm thinking of the CrossFit. So you have a print on your website. It's a CrossFit. This is named Bridges. Is it Jeff? No, Josh. Yep. Josh. I think Jeff Bridges yep. is an actor. All right. <laughs> Josh Bridges. The moment, so my husband really likes CrossFit and we somehow on the weekends he'll have, he'll be working out in our uh, workout room and he'll have like the CrossFit games going. And um, I actually saw, I don't, did he win the games that year? Was that the moment he won? I don't think he won the games. I think he won that specific. Was like the Murph maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So I recognize that moment, but the way that you captured it is way more there's just so much more to it than taking a photograph and and replicating it there's so much emotion and movement and added paint layers and um I like how you even described how you're not necessarily a 2d artist because I don't even know I'm not sure what kind of paint you're using but when you do that first layer with the paint um going through the cam the blank canvas and you have the kind of the background though that paint seems more three-dimensional than like a standard house paint I don't know what it is but it just already has this like sculptural effect to it so I'm sure that's on purpose um well thank you for all all the kind words um yes so the materials that I'm using they've they've been developed either based on acrylics but they're mixed with other stuff uh to give them more dimensional or kind of behave in a way that I wanted. Like I noticed before when I would dilute acrylics just with water, um, they wouldn't behave how I wanted. Um, like they would be either too liquid or when they dried, they changed too much. Um, the, the mixture that I'm using when it dries, it still looks textured, even the first layer. And then I've, I'm, I'm adding more texture onto that. But, um, yeah, all of these things are a language that I developed over uh, over years of trialing different stuff. And really, like, my North Star is creating the most epic, um, just like a, a, bowl, of, a bowl of energy um, artworks. Um, obviously, that's the vision. And then you have to bring into the real world. Um, so that's what I'm going for. I'm going for something that's very dramatic. I'm going for something that's very intense. I'm going for something that's very striking. I'm going for something that's grand, like you mentioned, the Greeks and so on. I, I am consciously going for that vibe. So all the all the tools and uh, everything that's part of my process now has been like plucked from left and right um, to kind of like mix up, make my own... Uh, style uh, which again is ever evolving whenever whenever i feel like i'm in a good place something else comes knocking in like well you should try this and then you start all over again it's terrible at the beginning it doesn't work how you want it to and then you start all over again and right now it's um 3d art now i'm I'm feeling really good in my uh in my process with physical paintings and and now I'm starting to learn the 3D stuff and it's just starting from scratch again. Like I'm really terrible, it's overwhelming and so on. But you know, I've, I've been through this process so many times that I just know that 
you just you know just go through the motions keep your eye on the prize and then eventually all kind of comes together and i'm sure you hit points where you were frustrated right where it's like what am i doing oh my god or yes. i'm i'm terrible at this maybe i should go back to doing what i was doing before where i had really mastered technical drawing and you know whatever um i think that's so that's gonna really inspire my listeners because so many times even with you know social media everything you see the perfect part you see the end result you see somebody's chapter 25 you don't see chapter one of their story so i think that's really going to encourage some people to obviously you're a lifelong learner and you're embracing the process of learning and not being good at something right away and that is such a huge message that i hope my listeners get from listening to my podcast so thank you so much for sharing that that is amazing sure. Um, okay. I, so I talked about, I learned about your work from the Marie, Marie Forleo podcast. What is your connection with sports and your artwork? You kind of touched on that with the, you know, bringing forward these modern figures and telling their story. Um, what is it about sports specifically? Are you, uh, an athlete yourself? Have you, were you an athlete growing up or is this something that you were, you know, aside from telling the story of their pinnacle moment and their achievements, um, is there something else that goes with it? Um, yeah, so this is where I feel like I stand out from the usual sports artists in the sense that growing up, I had no interest in sports whatsoever. I was the biggest nerd. I didn't want to do anything physical. Uh, even in PE classes, I never participated. I just had no interest whatsoever. And then, um, when I was in my second year at uni, I started going to the gym and exercising for the first time ever. And I, and I know for most people it's obvious or like, uh, you know, nothing new, but it was for the first time where I experienced what it was like to push my body to the limit or like to feel stronger every week or like every month or, um, you know that part of the workout where you want to give up and then you push through and you just feel like who who am i like my body a minute ago was done but another part of me is pushing through and now there's, there's all these other levels and i'm feeling on fire and so on so that those feelings i just became fascinated with it and i tried to capture it into paintings and initially I started painting um, because I was into fitness. I was in like fitness athletes uh, and so on. And then I did that and I became a bit, bit bored. And then I started realizing that it was more the movement that I, I was interested in. So then I went full speed ahead into studying movement. I started a, a year long project where every day I created a new painting for uh, 350 days. And it was all kinds of movement, everything from belly dancing to uh, <laughs> uh, rock climbing to CrossFit, extreme sports, uh, everything, yoga, everything in between. And um, during that process, I realized that the people that I gravitated the most towards were people who were at the top of their fields. So it was the movement, but it was also the fact that they were excellent at what they were doing. They were like, they were the goats. And so I took those two things and I continued painting. Um, and I think the thread throughout all of this is I always look out for boredom. So I feel like boredom for me is a very good indicator of when it's time to move to the next level. Um, so throughout looking back I can see how at any stage I hit a place where I was bored with I was bored like kind of misaligned with what I was painting and I looked into it and I, I made some changes from there and I remember a few years ago I was painting um, I think it was a CrossFit athlete and I just remember I spent their whole body, and I think it was a girl in a, uh, just a sports brand and everything. So there was a lot of skin and details. And um, I just remember it feels a bit redundant 
painting all of these muscles, I feel like maybe I could paint a bit less, like how much is necessary to include into the image to get a point across and how much could we like skip? How much of that can become a smudge? How much of that can become a movement? And then where does it work and where does it not? So again, that was a moment where I was bored painting all those abs, <laughs> those 10 abs or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, okay, I'm feeling disaligned now. What What is it and where can I go next? And um, yeah, that's when I moved into the more, uh, more even more fluid and abstract, uh, ab- abstract way of working. And like I said before, it continues to evolve. Uh, I haven't hit the boredom state yet in what I'm doing now. But yeah, I feel like that's, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's something to look for. And it's a teacher, really. Oh, my goodness. That was awesome. And thank you so much. I know that that has helped. That was even something I need to hear as an artist. And I think people who don't necessarily make art can apply that to their own lives to really look for the boredom and to use that as a teacher. That is, I can see that in your work too, how, um, you know, you're, you're at this level and you obviously have made choices. I'd be really interested to see what your work looked like a year ago or a few years ago. I'm gonna have to look back on your Instagram feed. Maybe you were posting um, for a while, but I think that's so valuable. So thank you for sharing that. And I'm definitely drawn to the striking contrast of your work with the black and the white, and then also your expressive brush strokes that are paired with portraiture. Um, Do you ever wish to work in color? I know on your website, you have a few paintings that have one color field with the black Um, expressive strokes uh, paired with that but what does that limited palette do for you and why black and white I'm definitely intrigued by that sure but actually I when I was when I did that big project of movement I was like full blast of colors it was just like rainbows of colors everywhere and actually for people who are watching this on YouTube behind you there's a painting with um, pink and neon green and blue that was like my go-to palette like all of that and um yeah I I really enjoyed it and then when I switched to the style of that was all watercolor so it's all very much um when it dries it's all flat like it's all level Uh, so when I moved into onto canvases and bigger works um and I started using textures and so on I actually remember the first painting I did was a painting of Neymar and um, I was using colors, uh, multiple colors into the painting. And I was so unhappy with how the painting turned out because um, it, it just clashed on multiple levels. I, I didn't know what I was doing with the texture yet. I didn't really know how to use it and how to integrate it with the body. So I was learning on that side and then the colors were getting muddy and so on. So. I just, after that painting, I just thought, right, let me simplify it, strip it all the way back, and let me work out how to use this texture, how I, how I, how I can use it where I'm happy. And obviously, the, the, the logical step is to go black and white from color, just to take the color out of the equation, and let's just focus on the composition, the flow, and um you know how how this texture flows in and everything else so after that i just moved into monochromatic so black and white and i really enjoy it i don't really have any desire to go back to color i did experiment my last collection um uh, was a set of abstracts and in there i experimented with some different backgrounds uh, underneath the texture and that was fun but in terms of uh, athletes uh, I think for now I'm good mm-hmm. <laughs> like black and white for now it feels just right for me yeah yeah it makes total sense you're you're condensing it down to that one moment and you're trying to get all the essence out of this moment right so that makes so much sense and I love the striking contrast of black and white 
Um, I actually have a piece behind me that's uh, more monochromatic for me. I usually work in color. Um, and that was a series of shades of gray. And that was very difficult for me, but the challenge of focusing on your composition and of the figure and all the movement that makes total sense. And it's striking. I mean, the, the contrast of the black and the white is awesome. So love it so much. I'm definitely not saying that you should go to color. I think what you're doing, what you're doing is definitely working. I was just interested in the thought process behind that. And, um, so that it makes total sense. And I, yeah, I definitely think that like, if I see you making, you know, working in the monochromatic palette from now till forever, I think that's a great choice. Or like you said, you may get bored. You might end up missing all of your colors coming back. Exactly. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Okay. Yeah. What does a artist live? We are so interesting, right? And we are not typical as far as career paths. So you're a professional artist. What does a typical day look like for you? And do you have your studio close to you or do you, um, do you walk, do you drive, do you take a train or is it in your home? How does that work? Sure. So, um, I am, <laughs> I don't have a very strict routine. I would like to say that, but I'm not, I, I sleep between eight to 10 hours every night. So usually wake around seven, half seven and, um, first hours of the morning, I usually just for, you know, sorting myself out is about 15 minutes walking distance from where I live. Um, it's in a city center and it's an old industrial building that has been turned into all kinds of uh, days for um, different businesses. And yeah, there's a, there's a big room in there. There's a half walls sections and I've got a four by four space, which is now becoming I procrastinate getting into the flow, but um, I would say usually it's between 4 and 5 p.m. where I'm peaking creatively. Um, so it's uh, probably I'm the most productive then. And then towards 7, 8 o'clock, I wrap it up and I come home and just chill, watch TV for like an hour or so. Mm-hmm. But then again, every every day is different depending on if you're if I'm painting a new collection, if I'm promoting a new launch, like I've just finished uh, painting a brand new collection um, that I've been working on for a few weeks, and now I'm moving into the PR stage. So it's all about I'm at home all day, just you know, doing all of that editing and contacting people, and yeah, it depends on what you know what the uh, what the workload is, what stage you are in with the different launches. And I'm sure you can understand, but I would love, to, my dream is to have the studio in my back garden. I would, I would love that because I don't drive. I don't want to drive. And a lot of times getting out of the house to the studio is, uh, you know, a bit too much of a barrier. And so I think if that was removed, if I was literally just at home and be able to do everything that, would be ideal for me mm -hmm. oh someday right yes fingers crossed Hopefully oh that's soon. so exciting I can't wait I've had a lot of studios have you had a lot of studios did you kind of work your way up to this this one that you're in now no this was my first one so oh, nice. after I finished uni yeah after I finished uni I moved to a different city and I used to paint in my one bedroom that I was renting and <laughs> Yeah. I lost my deposit so many times. I was using oil paint that would just get into the walls and the <laughs> staining everything. So definitely not a good idea. So I found this space is uh, very affordable and I've just been there since. Uh, yeah, it's a, a bit of a creepy building. There's some ghosts in there that watch me Ooh. sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I love a good ghost story. <laughs> my, I have yes, had some studios that had creepy door slamming behind you and all kinds of stuff okay yeah. man the i feel like that's a whole other, on, the, yeah. 
that's a whole other podcast episode. Maybe I'll have to have you back and yeah. we're on Halloween. You can tell all your ghost stories. Spooky stories. Yeah. <laughs> I love definitely. it. Spooky stories from the studio. Oh man. Yes. That's good. That's a great I'm gonna have to write that down. That's a good idea. We'll have to do that. Let, hold on a second. Spooky <laughs> studio stories. Okay. Yeah. I, I've, okay. So I really like your Instagram page. You have some process videos. I know videos are all the thing right now. I'm not so great about posting videos lately because I got kind of tired of it, but I can see from your process videos that being in your apartment, in your room would not be a good situation for your style of artwork because no, I, so it's so amazing. The process can be so messy. Right. And those, those drips and, and you just need to have room to create and not have to feel confined to a wall or something. I mean, at one time when I was in yeah. university, I had a sculpture class and I had to paint, I had to paint styrofoam. And I, so I decided to spray paint and it was too cold outside. So I had drop oh, cloths no. all over my dorm room and I spray painted in my dorm room and oh my goodness, like if my kids do that someday, I'm, that's not, that's not okay. That's, that's a poor choice. Other people on my floor definitely knew what I was up to and were not happy. So anyway, yeah. that's a random side note. Okay. Aside from being a painter and a studio artist, what do you like to do that fuels your creative spirit? Do you have a hobby or something creative that you do in your spare time? Not for money, just for you. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be you know, visual art could be music or, you know, anything. Something you yes. Like to do? So I, I actually, actually read books for fun. I mean, I, um, whenever I have free time, I like to just be on my own and, um, learn stuff. I mean, that, for me, that's interesting. I'm very much into, uh, um, spirituality in a sense um, like astrology I recently discovered human design which just took me by a storm and that's all I'm reading about at the moment um, so everything to do with that with you know uh, other realms uh, energy frequency all of that that's my vibe so I think pretty much that's where I spend all my free time Okay. researching and enjoying yeah awesome i like to read too <laughs> reading is awesome um let's see i have a list of questions as you know name one yes. major okay you've had some career highlights because you have a highlight reel on your instagram page too with these athletes holding your artwork what's a what's a big highlight for you or you can touch on a few if you want like you've obviously you've created a lot of artwork and you've done you know so many things what what are some highlights for you? Um, but just before I came on this call, I got um, a picture from uh, Liverpool that uh, uh, the picture is with Mo Salah holding my painting. And that just um, blew my mind. Uh, that's the most recent one. I would say the project I did with the NFL um, is definitely up there. Um, oh, tell us they, about that. I need to know more yes. about that. So <laughs> they opened a new state, uh, stadium in LA. Um, and that's what, so it was a stadium and adjacent was their new HQ offices. And they had a, a huge wall and they brought in uh, 10 or 15 artists to create uh, specific athletes that would then uh, be used as a mural on that big wall so initially I they asked me to do a painting they loved it I asked them to do the second one so I've done two paintings for them and then when I saw seen the final uh, mural with all the other artists and all the different styles mixing together I think that is that for me was a surreal moment of course working with the NFL um, it just in the beginning, I generally thought it was there were spam emails when they were messaging me. So oh, really? um, I, I just went ahead with them thinking like, this sounds really good, but there's also a good chance it's good, just like a fake, whatever. Yeah. But no, it was all real, it all happened. Um, and hopefully I'll go to see in person soon. 
yo, you haven't been over there yet. No, no, I haven't so, been to the U US ever, but um, it's one of my big goals, yeah. Oh, you're going, that's awesome. Oh my goodness. Okay, I did see a picture, I think, from that, the NFL. Was it a hallway? I'm trying, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just told you what size they wanted and who they wanted it of, something like that. Well, we had to send over the images digitally, like a high resolution mm -hmm. uh, digital file. So I just, uh, I just, um, I created whatever was comfortable for me at the moment. One, one was about 80 by 60 centimeters. The other one was a big one. Uh, I think it was, uh, 1.2 meters by one meter. Okay. Oh my uh, gosh. That's so yeah. cool. I'm trying to calculate the inches in my head, but it's not working. Yeah, at the it's fine. We can figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most people, yeah, this is not just a United States um, audience. So you're in good hands. You're fine. But uh, that is amazing. And yeah, I've heard of the NFL. That's so cool. Unfortunately for artists, we do get a lot of spam emails where, you know, some guy wants to buy a painting for his wife's anniversary and could you yeah. send me a check? And it's very weird and the, you know, the grammar's not good and you can tell, but oh my yeah. goodness, that's I'll so that awesome. And uh, I'm so excited. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more of that coming your way. So that is amazing. Uh, okay. Okay. B school with Marie Forleo. So you were enrolled in this thing called B school, which is a, uh, yeah. an online course. You can explain kind of a little bit more what that is, but, um, what was that experience like? And I do have artists that tune into this podcast. So I'm really interested that as an artist, you enrolled in this, would you recommend it for artists? Um, it's enrolling in something like that. I know it's an investment, but what do you think? And I've, you, you know, you're not sponsored by Marie Forleo by any means, but right. You told yeah. me that earlier. Uh, yeah. This is just my uh, individual free opinion. Um, yes. I have followed Marie for uh, like eight or 10 years for a long time. And as a creative, I feel like she was the only person who was giving business advice that was also considering creatives um which is different from just normal traditional business advice which is find a problem provide a solution you're in business um obviously for us it's a bit different we work more with emotions we sell inspiration really uh so how what's the problem there <laughs> well, yeah there's no art emergency exactly how you know how do you create an emergency around that so um i found her for a long time and i saved up for this program which was a bit of an investment and i feel like ever since i've done it my business has took a very sharp turn up um should artists consider it Absolutely, uh, unless you're the kind of artist who only does the creating and leaves everything else to a gallery who's going to manage you and promote you and brand you, um, which is now less and less uh, common and less and less favorable for us as artists. I feel like before, before the internet, before social media, they were the gatekeepers. They were the people who, you know, would say, yeah, you've got a chance at this or not, uh, because they were managing all the galleries, they had monopolized the collector base, and you pretty much had to go through them. Whereas now it's completely different. I chose to be an independent artist, which means I have to do all sides of my business. I have to uh, be the strategy, I have to do the marketing, um, editing and everything else. So uh for that purpose i feel like this program was invaluable for me and yeah it's major it's made a huge difference for me in terms of clarity of where where i fit in who i'm serving and how to best communicate and uh you know make these people aware that i exist basically um so for me, it was a 
a big uh, a big step up. Um, of course, there's people at different levels. Like recently, I had somebody message me, another artist, who's uh, in the more beginning stages, but she was ready to quit her job and be a full-time artist and so on. Um, and she was asking me questions about what was the best platforms to uh, to make money quickly, where I heard the NFTs are making money, how, where do I go? He was just, and I, I'm not judging because I've been at that stage at some point. It's just uh, for it to become a business, you need to do some deep work of understanding who you are as an artist and how you relate that to the marketplace. And no matter how weird your art is, or how do you think there's no way to explain it? There, um, there are people, there are collectors, there are communities who are looking for each kind of type of art, but you need to have the clarity of where do you fit in? And I know as artists, we don't like to be put in a box. We don't like to be told uh, to put, put labels, but if you want to relate to the outside world, that's how it works. And you need to understand where to direct your efforts. So for that reason, I find it very helpful. Uh, people may be interested. It's not just for artists. Uh, actually, the majority of people in the course are um, service providers, uh, people doing healing and coaching and teaching and um, a lot of one-on-one -on -one services. But the, the course is designed to include artists and people selling physical products, mm -hmm. which um, I found very helpful. So, and as a teacher, I feel like the information is everywhere. You can get the same information pretty much everywhere, but it's it's a way the information is conveyed and the energy that it's shared with. And I feel very connected to Marie and how she markets herself, the content she creates. I have cried watching some of her content mm -hmm. and that's the... the that's the sort of stuff that I want to do. So that's why I felt like this was the right thing for me. It may not be for you, different teachers for different people. And yeah, but I feel like if, unless you're an artist who's going to bury their head in the sand and head, hand over everything else to other people for 50% of the profits, <laughs> not on my watch. No. Yeah. Um, if you're not that kind of person, you need to figure out how to run a business one way or another. That's, that's so helpful. All, all the things that you shared. Thank you so much. I want to sign up now. <laughs> and I think it's, I think it's a surprise for people to understand that as an artist, if you're not working with a gallery, how much of your time is spent on your computer doing the back end of your business versus the time in your studio? Because in a perfect world, like we would be in our studios every day you know, five days a week or more, but there are so many other parts to it. So I definitely see the benefit in enrolling in B school or other related programs. I love Marie Forleo so much. I think her, you're right. Her podcast is, I feel like her and I are friends and she's telling me, you know, in such a nice way. And also really ex being accepting of people who have multiple passions that they want to pursue and really figuring out what you want to do and following your, your North star, your purpose. So I love everything that she creates. I think, I mean, what a beautiful endorsement that was. She should be giving you a commission. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm good. I'm uh, good. I'm happy. I'm happy to advise whoever mm -hmm. wants to know, but ultimately, and I do want to mention this, um, the results that I got out of it are relative to where I am in my journey, like all the years I've already put into it and the work that I've done during the program. It's not the case because I think people get confused of if somebody, if one person has got the results and I pay this money, I'm going to get this. All. It's, it's not, doesn't work like that. It's very much on like the biggest takeaways were the worksheets that she provided in which I had to dig deep and answer all those questions. And based on those questions, I, you know, the dots started connecting. It wasn't some magic elixir that she gave us all. It was, it was a framework through which, through which we worked. So the more work you do, the, the deeper you go into it, 
uh, the more you're going to get out of it. So I don't want it to feel like, right, just because he's had a good time with it, paying the money, it means I'm going to have the same. So just making that disclaimer. Yeah. It's like taking, it's like taking a college course. You have to do the work. You can't just exactly. sign up for the class and maybe sit in the back row and like doodle the whole time, which is what we want to do. Yep. But I, okay. One other question about B school, I'm going to ask this real quick is, is there an opportunity to network and get to know other people within B school? Is that an opportunity for you to make new contacts outside of your studio? Because you know, the art world is only so big and we have to make a really cast a very wide net in order to find our audience. Was there value in that too? Yeah, um, well, apparently there's a Facebook group for all the students, which I did never knew about. So I missed out on that, so I, I need to look for that. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's um, discussion areas. So there's people interacting with each other. And I did make some, uh, connections there and even I was gonna it didn't come to fruition but we were discussing doing um exhibiting some art into like a luxury fitness space um so yes people have, I feel like they're very open very engaging there again there's no guarantees but it looks like and if you know Marie you know her community is quite engaged anyway um it's a really good place to find like-minded people who are ready to be open and, you know, do cool stuff together. Um, I've obviously been missing out on part of it just due to my own fault. But yeah, there is a community area to it. Okay, awesome. All right, let's see. Thank you for sharing all of that. We, I know people want to know more. Tell us, tell us about your projects for this year and exciting things that you have coming up in 2022 that you're willing to share with us. What do you have? What are you working on? Yes. So what I've just finished working on, and your podcast is going to come out just the week before it goes live, which is perfect divine timing. Um, I have partnered with a NFT marketplace called Genius. Genius, but it's spelled Genie, A-C-E at the end. Okay. Um, and we're launching a collection of NFTs together. So it's gonna be my first ever collection of NFTs. Um, I've created eight new paintings for this. How many? Uh, eight eight okay. brand new paintings for it. The theme was um, legends of extreme sports. So Ooh. we have eight different extreme sports and we have like the GOAT, the you know, top athlete, sorry, in each one of those sports created, I feel like it's my, the best work that I've created so far. Incredibly dynamic, just, ah, so good. I wanted to eat the paintings. Um, so these are coming out the first week of May. We're gonna be launching them. It's gonna be three tiers. So it starts uh, at around 65 pounds, which would be about $80, the, US. the lower mm -hmm. tier. And then you can also get the higher tier is the one of ones, which is you buy an NFT and you get the physical artwork with it as well. And some extra goodness as well. So this Wait. has been Oh, that's exciting. Yes. The... So can you explain this is the tiers a little bit more. I'm sorry. Well, the, the highest yes. tier is the you have eight NFTs, right? Yes. So and I what, have what... eight core artworks. Okay. So eight paintings. And each one of these has been split into a pyramid of three levels. We have the bottom one, which is the most affordable one, the collectibles. Um, then we have the rare ones. So, sorry, let's go, let's backtrack. Collectibles, there's uh, 50, um, 50 NFTs in that group. So one painting. Mm -hmm has 50 copies of collectibles. They're gonna look like um, sports cards. And then one level above, it's a collection of just 10. And that's the, uh, that's an animated version of the painting. Oh, but cool. there's just 10 of them. It's like a limited edition uh, mm -hmm. print series yep. of 10. And they're a bit more expensive and there's only 10 of them. And then the top one is just one of one 
which means if you buy that NFT, it's going to be a talk auction. Uh, when the auction ends, whoever has the highest bid wins the auction and also gets the original painting with it. Oh, the physical painting? Yes, yes. Whoa, ooh, I love that. And then also get some other goodies like VIP invites to my next event. Um, I, they get a, to come and visit me in my studio if they want. So we're working on some really cool rewards as well. So yes, my first my first step into the digital world. And it's been a long time in the processing and in the making. And I'm the most excited about it. And yeah. it's because I have a long term um have a long term journey planned with in the metaverse. I do want to open my own museum of sports legends. Yeah. So it is it's just a first drop towards like a longer journey. So yeah. <laughs> oh my mind is blown. And your work is absolutely perfect for what you described. That's so genius that you have your so the NFTs are they're in the digital world and they're digital items and you have 50 of these little trading like the trading cards that's the that's yep. the first tier and then the middle tier is the animated ones yep. and they're like they're like physical prints right like a li very limited edition print and then yep. you have your actual original the the main event the the main nft which comes with the yep. actual painting yes <sighs> So did you work with somebody to create this, um, this type of, not program, but this body of work through the NFTs, or did you come up with this on your own? Because I have artists that we're all kind of thinking, and, you know, I'm a painter, it's the same. I'm like, wow, how am I going to turn this into an NFT? Now I have some new ideas, but how did you get to that point? Sure. So over the past year, I've had um, a couple of platforms reach out to me uh, to uh, work with them, except the majority of them were brand new businesses in which I would be their first launch. And I just didn't want to do that. And then the Genius, which is the company that I'm launching with, um, they'd actually been in contact with me since August of last year and have already done a couple of launches. It went really well. And we have worked together in terms of Together we came up with a concept and then they had their the tiering system worked out and we just kind of customized that to kind of match my, uh, the fact that I have a physical artwork and so on. Um, so it was, it, it's a partnership. They brought in the technical platform side and then I'm bringing in the creative and we're both, uh, merging basically our audiences to create this launch. So um, yeah, because I was I was exploring different ways um, of, you know, should I just go to OpenSea? Should I just, you know, yeah, I, I definitely didn't want to do one of those generative uh, projects. We have like 7,000 artworks and so on. Um, it just didn't match what I wanted to do. So I wanted, if you look back on my Instagram, I, I, I said that I was working on it for a couple of months and I just, it was just about finding the right way for me. Um, so yeah, I, I, right now it just feels like everything kind of aligned perfectly and we're launching this first week of May and it's just, it's, it's exciting because everyone is new in it. So we're all kind of figuring out as we're doing it and yes there's going to be some flops and some mistakes and whatnot but it's just it's really exciting to be part of the the, the next chapter the first stages of exactly of web3 whoa my mind is blown i love this so much i feel like this is a whole other conversation um and how amazing yeah. is it so in my limiting or my you know i I don't know a ton about NFTs yet. And if you guys don't know who what about NFTs, there's plenty of podcasts and there's plenty of YouTube videos about them now. But um, I always thought, you know, oh, as a digital artist, this is more for the digital artist. But you have really showed me just now that if you're a create, say you're a painter 
and you have a painting that is that could be a very cool bonus is to actually own the physical piece and the digital piece so i think that's so that can be very powerful for artists who create tangible art to include that but then the also cool part is that if somebody if somebody buys your nft and then they sell it you get a, a portion of that sale from now until forever right yeah so that's, yep. that is like magic. That's a really awesome thing for creative people. So anything else you have coming up? I mean, that's huge. What is your launch date? I need to know. Um, we, the 5th of May. So Thursday, okay. the 5th of May. Nice. Yeah. And I just, I just want to go back a little bit when you said about, um, you know, as artists doing physical stuff, uh, how we fit into this whole thing and I think yes the first flash in the pan was the digital artists so you know they created this market but at the same time I feel like just the way we had no idea how uh, when we first started emails and when that was all what the internet was about and, you know, articles and we were all like <laughs> sending whole chains of emails to our friends to share an article and stuff like that. When we were at that stage, we had no concept of where the internet would go, what, what internet with Instagram would look like, what the internet with YouTube would look like, with podcasts. Like we had, we could not, we could not imagine it. And I feel like it was in the same place now where um, you think, oh, somebody's just buying a digital uh, drawing, whatever, how, what, you know, what's the point of that? Or how do I fit in as an artist? I think it's important for all the artists to get into it because uh, being part of it now will give you a bigger advantage later on because you don't know what it's going to evolve into. And uh, because I've done more recently to this and I do have the longer term vision for it, I feel like buying an NFT from me now is not just buying, uh, you know, adding, uh, having a JPEG, having, you know, a digital asset. It's being part of a community, being part of a movement, being part of a uh of a community that will give you more and more benefits as, as time goes on. So for example, like access to exclusive access to events and so on. And then as things evolve, you know, more things are gonna come on. It's, it's just, uh, it's really exciting on both ends, just for me as well, but for collectors too. Yes, it's really exciting. And your, your, um your gallery that you're going to have in the metaverse. Yes. Yes to that. I want to have of a gallery course. too. Why not? It Why sounds not? awesome. I mean, people are going to have their own virtual homes, right? With their NFTs on the wall. Is that right? You're going to have, everyone can display their, their stuff and it's going to be amazing. So my, my mind is a little bit blown. I mean, I still, I feel like I understand it, but you know, it's like you said, we went from email to, I don't even, I remember, myself. No. I remember in high school when someone said, Oh, someday you're going to be able to take a picture with your phone and your phone's going to become your camera. And it was like, what? No way. Yeah. Mm. You'll be able to watch videos on your phone. I mean, that was like completely unheard of. So technology is so amazing. So you have that coming up. And um, how can we best support you? You have a mailing list. I just signed up and I already got an email from you. So kudos to you because I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet. But um, you have a, a robust email list that you know, everyone should sign up for to hear all about this launch and future projects. What other ways, how can we support you? Tell me all of your links, like list your website, all the things. Where can we find you? Sure. So the email list is probably the best one, and which is on my website. And everything else is David Roman Art. And I post the most frequently on YouTube. 
I'm putting more effort into TikTok and sorry, on Instagram the most frequently. I'm putting more effort into YouTube and TikTok now. Uh, I'm on Pinterest, pinning away. Um, that's <laughs> that's uh, pretty much it. Wherever you are, follow me. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel like the email list is the, the most secure way to make sure you see all the cool stuff that's coming up. Yes. What's your website? davidromanart.com. Okay. And you have prints for sale on your website. You have originals and you have this upcoming NFT launch. Oh my goodness. Okay. Do we have time for a rapid round of questions? Yes, let's go for it. Okay. I don't want to take up your whole day because I know you have things to do. I asked the same questions. And so here we go. Top of mind, you don't have to think too hard, but what is your favorite color? Uh, green. Okay. What shade of green? There's a lot of green. Uh, I don't know the name for it, but like a, a bright neonish one that looks okay. like grass in the, in the spring. Oh, nice. It's coming up. All right, so where does your inspiration strike? Some people get their best ideas when they're in the shower. I get my ideas when I'm driving in my car. Where do you get your best ideas? Um, when I'm scrolling through Instagram and um, mm. I see athletes doing different stuff or when I exercise. I feel like I get some epic ideas when I exercise. Nice. I like that. All right. You read a lot of books. Is there a bo- uh, book or movie mention that you want to bring up? Um, hmm. Probably State of the Soul by Zary, Gary Zukov. In terms of books, that's one that I go back to over and over. And movies. Hmm. I really like Doctor Strange. I like all the energy stuff they're doing. Okay. Yeah. I'm into Marvel. Doctor Strange is a cool movie. Yes. Very cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Is there an art form or a sport that you admired and you wished you were good at, but you're not? Uh, probably CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Probably CrossFit. <laughs> I mean, it looks some... really fun. Doesn't it? It looks really fun. Yeah. Those people are crazy, I feel. That's like elite. I know we watch the games on TV and it's like the Murph. Oh my goodness. How do you even, how do you do that? And those people are, I feel like the CrossFit athletes are like the Olympic gladiators of today. Kind of, I don't know. I love it. Yeah. It's like a 360 fitness. Totally. All right. Studio beverage of choice. No judgment. Red Red Bull. Red Bull. (laughs) Okay. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> oh, a lot of caffeine. That's a lot of caffeine. Yes. Is it like one Too Red Bull caffeine. does the trick? Do you have to have one every time you're in the studio? Um, I actually have to sometimes. <laughs> that's yeah. That's intense. I need a lot of caffeine. I'm a very like, I'm very chill, laid back person. I feel like I'm high most of the time, and I need a lot of energy to just get yeah. to like yes. ground level yeah. yeah and you put a lot of energy into your pieces I understand that I drink coffee a lot when I'm in my studio which surprisingly on my podcast I may be the only person I know that drinks coffee in the studio now which seems weird but you know like a stereotype like artists staying up all night drinking coffee but I like the caffeine I do I just need that jolt you yes. know we need it we yes. need it all right aside from reading do you have a favorite hobby or pastime um watching movies but i feel like that's a bit of a cheat because that's everyone so oh no that's good that's good (coughs) excuse me okay what is a what is a creative challenge or advice that you'd like to give our listeners today creative challenge Mm. well first thing would be for people who think creativity is for other people and they're not lucky enough to be bestowed with this 
I don't know, somebody gives you permission. Um, if you're human, you are creative, end of the story. And that creativity needs to be exercised, otherwise it will go against you. So that creativity could be everything from um, creating great memories, creating cool trips, creating nice lunches for your kids, creating, um, uh, I don't know, synthesizing information could be everything, anything, but you need to put that creativity to use and you'll feel much more better for it. I love that so much. That is pretty much the, that's like my life's mission <laughs> is to highlight creativity in everybody. And truly we're all artists, right? In some way, shape or yeah. form. So I love that message so much. That is great. So yeah, everyone needs to kind of figure out what their medium is, right? Where maybe we're painters, but cooking is creative and, and other things. I love that creating a trip. Those are all excellent points and great ideas. So thank yeah, you. Because so there's some people who feel like they've got no talent, but then they, whenever you're with them, you have the best time. So obviously you create really fun times. So, you know, embrace it, go for it. Yeah. Create an awesome life, right? Yeah, exactly. Create a good time. All right. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything you else want to, sh anything else you want to share with us today? Um, no, that's it. Just, you know, keep creating. Keep creating. And I hope you keep creating. I cannot wait to see this NFT release and to watch you um, continue creating your art and maybe taking those new twists and turns and the artist's journey, right? And I hope everybody here um, takes the time to find you and to follow you and support you in any way that they find possible. Or, you know, another great way to support an artist is to also tell your friends about that artist. So to share their work. Mm -hmm. I know for me sharing um, any type of announcement or a new piece of art, any kind of way that you can share and and bring more people to the artist to show what they're doing is a huge help too. So, oh my goodness. Well, I love this conversation so much. I might have Me to have too. you back in the fall. We can tell our ghost stories yeah. <laughs> from the studio. <laughs> I think that's a great idea, actually. I'm really uh -huh. not kidding. I think we should do that. So maybe I'll have you back in the fall. We can talk about your NFT release and what else you're doing and all of the things. So thank you again for being on the show. And I look forward thank to, you for having me. Uh, yes, I look forward to seeing everything you're doing in the future. And so thanks again for tuning in to I Like Art and we'll see you next Monday on a new episode of the podcast. I hope you, everyone here has a wonderful, wonderful day. We'll see you later. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye.